Evergrande's defaults are spreading. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, we're going to have a look at an article from Reuters looking at other Chinese property developers that are also, well, defaulting on their payments. So it's it's not the good, not, a, not the perfect time to be investing in bonds in China. Now, I can't really imagine anyone would have rate, rated them as a, a very high and secure investment. There's Always an element of sovereign risk there too. That really isn't mentioned that much. But I mean, if you're buying, what, B bonds or C, triple C negative bonds, what do you expect? Or it's an element of risk that you'd imagine and hope that the people making these investments or buying these bonds are taking account of. So let's have a look at this article. So Chinese property developers' ability to repay debt hits decades low. So it's not just Evergrande, everyone. Even before China's Evergrande Group's debt crisis sent the country's property sector into a tailspin, Chinese property firms were struggling to earn enough to make interest payments on their debt, data showed. So it's not ju- we're not even talking about paying back the bonds. This is just paying back what the interest on their debt. At the end of June, the aggregated interest coverage ratio of 21% Big Hong Kong listed Chinese real estate developers fell to 0.94, the worst in at least a decade, according to Reuters calculations based on Refinitiv data. The ratio of a company's interest expenses to earnings before interest and tax was 1.47 at the end of last year. That's, yeah, that's not looking good. And here we have, well, there we go. Once China's top property developer, Evergrande, missed its second offshore bond interest payment last week, the company, once the country's largest, is reeling under a $305 billion debt pile and faces a massive restructuring. Rattled investor confidence from China Evergrande Group's recent troubles and likely default could spell a potential funding crunch for the Chinese property sector, and speculative-grade issuers, SMP Global said in a report. China had already started to push property firms to cut excessive borrowing and land buying, and the crackdown hit them hard and limited their ability to refinance debt that is maturing in coming quarters. And it looks like it's the triple, this triple, bottle, triple red bottom line that China, the party, has forced on these developers, which is just, well... Put an end to the game, really. Sunshine 100 China Holdings, China Oceanwide Holdings, and China Fortune Land Development have all defaulted on payments this year. The risk that China allows some of these firms to declare bankruptcy is significant. Well, if you're defaulting on all of your debt payments, is it going to be inevitable? Allowing an effective default here is a clear statement from the government that they'd like to deflate the housing bubble and that they'd be willing to let other major builders default to further that, said Eric Levy, Chief Investment Officer at Billard. The country's real estate firms did try to accelerate efforts to cut debt last year after regulators introduced caps on three debt ratios. The median debt-to-equity ratio for these 21 firms fell to 1.8 at the end of June, the lowest since 2017 from 1.9 in December, calculations showed. But their net debt to EBITDA held at 4.9 in June from 5.2 at the end of last year, a score considered risky by industry experts, suggesting it would take a long time to pay off the debt. So... We can see here Chinese listed property developers, their net EBITDA. And here's Hong Kong listed Chinese property developers' debt to equity ratio. We can just see how that's steadily climbing up. Currently, under the three red lines, Kaohsiung, RNF, and Evergrande are among our tracked developers that are categorized below, uh, beyond. 
the yellow group, indicating weaker than peers' financial positions, said Cynthia Chan, analyst at Dawa Capital Markets. In terms of cash-to-short-term debt ratios, besides Evergrande and Gaozong RNF, which has very low ratios of below 1x, Gem Data, Agile, and China SCE also have relatively low cash-to-short-term debt ratios of 1.2 or below. Gaozong RNF Properties was raising as much as $2.5 billion by borrowing from major shareholders and selling a subsidiary according to exchange filings last month, highlighting the scramble for cash as signs of distress spread in China's property sector. Hong Kong listed property developers cash to short-term debt ratios. We can see that here. So there we have it, everyone. It looks like, well, this is a growing contagion from one property developer to another. They're scrambling for cash. And, well, this has come from from the Chinese party. Changing the rules. So what do you think, everyone? Let's, let's have a bit of a talk about this one. Now, should we be concerned with the impact of, well, the collapse of Avagrande and other Chinese property developers? Well, it depends, really, on your exposure to that, directly or indirectly. Now, there are definitely going to be many investors that have bought bonds, you know, large hedge funds, large banks, large organizations, but hopefully they would manage that risk. Some of them, you see, this is, it's a small portion of their portfolio that's exposed to this. I think the greatest risk, particularly from an Australian perspective, and why we need to keep an eye on this, is that it's going to inc- decrease the demand for, well, our natural resources, and it will have flow-on effects to, for investors in China. I mean, they're already, well, there's already souring relations between Australia and China. There's already a de- well, inability for people to come here and uh, have holidays or for students to come here and uh, study. We also have issues with investment. It's harder for people to get money out of China. and that, That's cooled off for some time already here in Australia. So I, that's why we need to keep an eye on this, just to see the impact that that could have to portions of the economy here. I don't think it'll be the Lehman Brothers' glorious default and crash that some people are hoping, but we'll have to wait and see. What do you think, everyone? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content that I find and put together here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.